You're listening to Recurring Inc. Volume 1 with Rick Raditz, Jim Banks, Charles Kirkland, Andy Husong, and Jonathan Mizell. I'm Corey Bornman. These stories about five internet marketing masters that have built recurring revenue online are diverse in their beginnings and start as early as the 1980s. The obvious common thread is that every one of them has a beginning that drove them to look online for income opportunities. There's no one right way is what I heard over and over again. This is Charles Kirkland. I've known Charles for a lot of years. Charles is a media buying expert, product owner, ClickBank top 100 affiliate and consultant. Charles is also a dad and a husband. With Charles, it was carpal tunnel of all things that pushed him to quit his job in an engineering sweatshop and start an online business that generated $10,000 in only its second month. This is one of the earliest versions of an e-commerce product you'll find, and Charles started it purely from what was in his head. I'll tell you kind of how it got started. Uh, basically, had a job, and, um, ended up getting, got a degree in engineering, uh, got a job working as an engineer, which is truly just a completely high-paid sweatshop by any stretch of the imagination. There's, there's really no other way to put it. Um, so at the end of the day, I ended up, you know, basically working like a dog, getting carpal tunnel. And I remember telling my boss, you know, got carpal tunnel, um, I've got to have surgery. And he looked at me and goes, well, you know, we're busy. We're working on a project. Can you just postpone it for about six months? Oh, boy. And I was like, okay, A, you're complete. You know what? B, I'm leaving here as fast as humanly possible, and I never want to see this place again. And at that point, you know, I had, had the carpal tunnel surgery. The surgery helped, but not a whole lot. Um, and the doctor pretty much told me, he goes, Charles, you probably just won't be able to use a computer again. There are a lot of other jobs that are not computer related, and you should basically consider, you know, looking at those. Um, you know, we did the surgery, um, and at that point, I ended up quitting that job. And I, and I remember going home, or you know, he, actually heading home, thinking, "What am I going to do?" You know, here I am, you know, young dude, got a kid. You know, this this is not how I had envisioned my life to go. How old were you and, at that point? At that point, I was probably 26, 27, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. It was still pretty young. And I remember thinking, you know, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I remember going home thinking, okay, I've got a degree in engineering. I know how to, like, design buildings and barns and stuff like that. And, and that's, how, that's, just, that's what I was going to do. I decided I was going to do On top of this, you know, I go home, tell my wife what I'm going to do. She's like, I, you know, she's working for corporate America. Um, and I realized that I could not ask anybody I knew because nobody I knew done had if i asked hey what do you think of this of course you're an idiot charles you know what do you think you're gonna do make money online um so long story short i pretty much you know got a friend to help me and the first month we made zero you know it's i lived up to everybody's dreams and expectations i absolutely made nothing um so, you know, okay, this isn't working. So I remember Googling. I mean, and I think it was easier back then, Corey, because you really you didn't have a lot of options. Sure. I I, stu- I stumbled upon some dude named Corey Rudet- Rudilli, which I'll screw his name up. There was Corey and like two or three other people. And I remember just studying those guys like madmen. And I remember the first time I had a site together, I, you know, I was like, okay, this is great. Life is good. And what was weird about it? Um is the second month did about ten thousand in sales. We're selling like nine dollar ninety five cent PDF plans. Wow. Literally, as somebody would buy the plan, we would like create the plan because it would only take a few hours. And actually, originally they weren't even PDF. Originally they were print mail. Then we went to PDF. But literally, that's how I got started. I mean, it was nothing to do with I am, nothing to do with make money, other than the fact I couldn't work for an engineer anymore. I could, you know, my hours were limited. You know, and it was um, it was I, I will tell you, it's stressful. It was absolutely, unbelievably more stressful than I think it should have been. In 1996, Andy Husong was working as a postal clerk. He'd go to work and listen to business training courses on his Walkman. His coworkers knew what he was listening to, and they laughed about it. Andy started on the Warrior Forum in 1996 over a dial-up connection and a web TV and has since gone on to generate millions of dollars online setting up endorsed traffic deals for high converting webinars. First of all, what I did was um, I was actually um, on 
the internet, looking at internet marketing stuff. Um, I think it was the Warrior, I know it was the Warrior Forum. Mm -hmm. um, and this was back in like 1996. And I remember checking it out via a web TV. Um, I was a full-time postal clerk and didn't really have the funds to buy a computer at the time or didn't think I did. And uh, got a web TV, if you remember those. I do remember the web TV. Yeah. And so I was uh, dabbling a little bit, just kind of learning, you know, what it was all about. Um, I didn't really do anything with it at the time, but I started learning about it. And, you know, as I worked um, over the years, I, you know, would try different things. And, and as I was working for the post office, I'd listen to audios uh, while I worked. And people make fun of me because they knew I was studying things and <laughs> instead of just listening to radio and all that, which is all good now because I ended up quitting after – uh, calling in sick uh, two different Saturdays, um, about six months apart, to attend um, the first and second versions of what's called the System Seminar that Ken McCarthy put on okay. back in, gosh, 2001 or 2002? I think it was 2000. Yeah, something like that. It was like the end of 2001 and beginning of 2002 or something. Mm -hmm. And um, so from there, I uh, ended up meeting a, a guy by the name of John Reese who went on to uh, launch Traffic Secrets in 2004, and we became friends. And during uh, over that year and a half time of just being friends and everything, he ended up asking me if I'd be interested in becoming his affiliate manager. Mm, okay. And it was just a perfect segue for myself uh, at a time when you know I just uh, uh, needed a bigger opportunity and so on. And so I worked for him for five years and and. So for over 10, it's been about 12 years now I've been involved in that line of work uh, as it relates to joint ventures and online um, JVs and stuff like that. Rick Raddatz started in technology and was an executive at Microsoft during its heyday in the 1980s and early 1990s. Then Rick hit the perfect financial storm and had to start from scratch. Rick started his business charging to credit cards the cost of bootstrapping his online audio and video hosting business. That was about 18 months before YouTube arrived. Sure. Well, I, I had a career at Microsoft uh, during kind of the heyday of Microsoft, and so I learned a lot about, you know, you know programming and project management and marketing and uh, big visions for Microsoft. But when um, uh, I, I, uh, I left Microsoft and... Uh, had kind of a perfect financial storm and had to start all over again from scratch. And at the time, I was working for my dad. Um, so I thought, I, I need to uh, do something here. And I didn't want to be an employee. Uh, I mean, I, I was an employee, but I, I, did, I knew I wanted to, to start something. So I used Visa and MasterCard to fund the development of what became instantaudio.com. And, um, and basically, I, I moonlighted uh, with permission. I, I worked, you know, uh, two thirds of the time during the day and another two thirds of the time uh, at night. <laughs> and I got my first product uh, coded and done, and uh, that was how I got started in internet marketing. Well, that was back in uh, I started in two thousand two. It actually launched in two thousand three, and that was one of the first ways to easily get audio on your website. And, and so this is years before YouTube. Um, you know, it, the, the Internet was still on dial-up modems primarily. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so it could do audio pretty well. It, it, it could barely well, – at the time, it couldn't do video. It wasn't until late 2003 that it could really do video at all. Um, so that, that kind of sets the setting there. And there are a couple other competitors. There are a couple of tools to let you convert your WAV file to a flash file and then post the Flash thing online. And I just made it simpler. Uh, it, it, you could do it for free if you knew how or if you had the time, if you wanted to do all that. But I just made it a little simpler and easier. So even though there were free options available, the um, you know, people valued the subscription, and uh, I was off to the races. Okay. What was the uh, price point on that? Um, initially, it was uh, twenty nine ninety five a month. A actually, if we're going to be precise here, when I first launched, I thought nineteen ninety five a month. And then um, I ended up running into uh, Alex Mendozin and Armin Morin, 
and we ended up doing a deal. And they, the first thing they said was, the price is too low. We've got to raise that price to uh, twenty nine ninety five. And um, uh, it's hard to compare the two because we, we didn't really do a, 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 an A-B split test. But no one blinked an eye at, at that price. They just wanted audio on their website back when that was cool. So I asked Rick what methods he used to drive traffic to his offer so he could make sales. Yeah, we used uh, 100% um, uh, conference calls uh, where an affiliate would promote to their list. People would come on the conference call. Um, Alex Armin and I would, would talk about it. And then people would sign up. And, and, uh, and that's, that's all we did for months. Um, and then, uh, but we, again, th remember this is back in 2003. So, I mean, it, it was really cool to have audio on your website. Jim Banks was a big fan of the internet as soon as it was available on dial up around 1993. He sold insurance for a living and quit to work for a startup web design company. Jim was laid off three times from three different startups during those next 18 months, but Jim saw a need. Companies didn't know what to do with their websites. So Jim started one of the first pure digital marketing agencies ever, which he later sold for big money. So I became a, a big fan of the internet itself, uh, probably back in the probably 93, 94, something like that. Because it was all dial up, I ended up running up like a really massive telephone bill, like probably 1500 bucks a month, which, you know, and obviously when broadband came out, it was like fantastic. But um, so, yeah, so, so before doing internet marketing, I mean, I, I worked in insurance. I did that for about 12 years and I made really good money and, and, um, and I was very good at selling insurance, but you know, every year I made more money and every year I hated the job that I was doing more and more. So, um, I like sort of back in late 99, probably early part of 2000, um, I was really disillusioned working for an insurance company. Um, I saw on, on an old, um, bulletin board, there was a, a, a kind of dot com startup that wanted, um, somebody to kind of go in there and basically be the national sales manager for their, their web design company. So, um, so I quit my job in insurance and I went to work for this, um, basically this web design company. And what became really apparent was it was like really super easy to sell websites back in 99, 2000. Um, but most people would say, well, okay, so now that I've got it, what do I do? Um, so I started to, to kind of, um, learn a little bit about SEO. Uh, back then, sort of, there was some PPC, but it was like very, very early days. I mean, back then, the clicks were all like a penny a click, right, which was fantastic. Uh, but, you know, so it's mostly, um, you know, what they call paid inclusion, um, SEO. Um, and it was, you know, it's very, very easy to gain. But, um, you know, so people would say, well, what do I do now? So I, I found myself having to learn about digital marketing or internet marketing or what I can't, I can't even remember what we called it back there, but, um, you know, but, but it was very much a case of, you know, I had, a, had to learn how to help these companies market their products and services online. So we, you know, we built some web websites that did e-commerce, you know, a lot of them were sort of five page brochure sites, maybe a 15 page professional services site. Um, you know, and it would be like homepage about us page map, contact page you know but it, again it was almost like i think of it a little bit like the emperor's new clothes it was like you know we, we would tell people if somebody phones you up and says can you give me directions to your office don't give them directions to your office tell them there's a map on your website and to go and have a look at that you know and, and make sure you have your website address and your email address on your business cards and again you look back and go wow it was so basic but back then it was kind of you know that was the Wild West, really. So that was that was how I got into to kind of um, digital marketing to begin with, okay. um, you know. But I got like that. That was a sort of startup that lasted about six months. They raised some money from a property investor, and um, he just decided to kind of stop investing in the business. So I got laid off. Then I went to work for another company who who did premium rate telephone dialers. Um, and they did premium rate telephone dialers primarily for the adult industry and also for gambling. So people would ha would phone up to um, to speak to some girl on the end of a phone and it would be done at a premium rate. Um, so we were selling the dialers for that. Uh, but again, I did that for six months and I got laid off. 
again. Um, and then I went to work for another sort of startup for, I think it was like a, a telecoms company. Um, and I did that for six months and then I got laid off again. So, you know, after three spells of eight in, over the space of 18 months getting laid off, I decided to kind of set up my own business. Okay. Um, and I set up like, um, you know, at the time, what was one of the first digital, pure digital marketing agencies, you know, because by then I I'd, I'd sort of got pretty good at doing um, uh, PPC with, Overture, which was the forerunner to Yahoo, as it as it is known now. Okay. Um, and back in 2000, I mean, Google didn't even exist in the format that it does. I mean, it was it was around, but it didn't have a paid product. When it first introduced the paid product, it it was sold on a CPM basis. Um, and my first media buy with Google, I think it was like fifty thousand pounds. Okay. Um, and that was probably the best fifty thousand pounds I've ever invested in anything ever. Because <laughs> because I think Google eventually worked out that selling it on a CPM was not such a good thing for them. So they changed okay. it said CPC. So you've probably heard the term squeeze page before, right? It's that little lead capture page we all use to build our email list. Well, Jonathan Mizell coined that term squeeze page. He started as an insurance broker and found it incredibly difficult selling something to people that are not excited to buy it. In 1992, Jonathan tagged along to an internet seminar and was introduced to the concept of an autoresponder. A year later, he quit his job and began creating digital marketing products when the internet was just a baby. For years, Jonathan has been my most valued mentor and is a legitimate copywriting genius. Early part of my career, I was an insurance broker. And uh, from about age 19 to age 30, 31, and uh, but I did not like insurance. Um, I liked the people who worked there; they were all really nice. But it was a real difficult job for me because basically you're dealing with people who are buying something that they don't want, and uh, the only time you hear from them outside of the renewal is when they have this horrible accident, like a claim or a fire or something like that. And so. I wanted to get out of insurance, and I was looking at all kinds of opportunities. This was 1991, 1992, and a friend of mine said, have you ever heard of the Internet? And I said, no. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so he brought me to this uh, seminar uh, that was for IT professionals. And I swear to God, Corey, I didn't understand 90% of what these guys were talking about. But the one thing that they demonstrated was an autoresponder. And, um, and all I saw was there was this special email address you could send an email to, and then it would automatically respond back with a pre-programmed email. And I'm like, wow, well, that seems like it would be good for, for marketing and for selling stuff. And so um, we got online, got on AOL and CompuServe and Genie and all these services, and uh, uh, I got laid off about a year later, and um, I just decided to throw my hat in the internet rink. I, I think it was 1993, and uh, and it was it was great. It was it was certainly the best decision I ever made in my life, uh, outside of marrying my wife. Um, and uh, it 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 led to you know an amazing new career, and and it was it was fun. You know, people were excited and. And uh, people were having fun. It wasn't like insurance where, you know, people would call me up in the middle of the night and say my house is on fire, which actually happened to me once. And I told the guy, I'm like, well, call the fire department. <laughs> and he's like, we already called them, but can you get over here? So they, they, it, it all worked out. And I think that was like one of my very last claims and one of the last things I ended up doing in that space. And so... Um, uh, it was it was just uh, exciting to see this direct marketing uh, uh, forming on the internet. I had experience with direct mail. Uh, I had ex a little bit of experience with display advertising. We did a lot of direct marketing in the insurance industry, uh, but this was a whole new thing, and it was it was exciting. And uh, you know, there was just at the beginning of the internet, there was just nothing but opportunity, and so. Um, uh, you know, we saw it evolve to the point where it is today. What was the first product that you put online? First product I ever sold was a book that I had written. It was actually a course on uh, direct mail. 
and it was, I can't remember what it was called. I think it was, it was called Direct Mail Firepower, I believe. And it was a physical book. So we would put ads on uh, CompuServe and AOL and, and those services and also some of the news groups. And then we would get people's email address and we would send them an email pitch. And then they would have to call us because we didn't have any online ordering and give us their credit card number. I was the operator and the customer service rep in addition to the developer. And run their credit card and then we would literally go to the post office and ship them their package. It was called, uh, oh, what was it called? It was called the Online Marketing Power Pack. And it had two VHS videos and it had a CD uh, a data CD, right, not a DVD, and then it had two big binders, and then it had a, a book. And um, so I had, like, one of those left, right? I had the, the master copy, and I kept it for posterity, but, uh, you know, my wife laughed because she's like, are you ever going to go back and sell the power pack again? And I'm like, no. And she's like, well, maybe just let it go. I'm like, no, man, this is going to be in the... Internet Marketing Museum of History or something, exactly. you know, 20 years. So that's an introduction to five of the best and brightest minds in digital marketing history. Everything we do today can be tracked back to techniques that these cats experimented with and developed in the early days of digital marketing. We're literally standing on the shoulders of these giants today. I'm Corey Borman, and this is Recurring Inc., private interviews with the masters of recurring income.